Ah, another damn glove ripped. <sighs> Random quality. Hey, Richard and Greg. Alrighty, let's see. Keyboard down. How's our audio sync? Hopefully it's tolerable. Uh, tolerable for a day like today. Hey Travis, hey Andre. Uh, Q's here as well. Oops, that's an important part of an iPhone 6. What am I doing? What am I doing? I need a container. Container with a magnet. Marvellous. What's the problem here? YouTube not receiving enough video? Oh, cracky. Who knows what. Hey, Prado. Hey, Jane Zimmy. Uh, da -da -da -da. Uh, did um is is the audio okay? Uh, let's get this thing disassembled. I feel like having a cooler day today, so I'm going to drop that to 23. Ah, uh, g'day. Chris, wheel slick, yes, I, I did not sleep last night, so I didn't really get a chance to wash my hair today, and washing my hair is something that I should do every day, because it's hot weather up here, and all the stress, and if, I, um, if I'm not careful, if I don't wash my hair every day, I stand at a very elevated risk of being invaded by the United States who will then plunder my oil reserves Hey Ernest uh, Edward Galvin too uh, G'day Dr. No, how's it going? Yeah I just did not, uh, I tried going to sleep, it probably was about quarter to four when I headed off to bed and then I woke up again about half an hour time and uh, oh dear god this is bad yo that's nasty so nasty alright uh, let's see so backlight valve that's interesting because all the liquids over here for now but the backlight there yay this will be fun Spiky, I'll take your 32 because believe me, that's better than what we got here. So, yeah. Uh, disconnect the battery before I do anything. Ah, really? No, just to finish the stream? That's right, someone said that it was Mark harvesting parts from unwilling victims. Hey, Richard T. Yep, that's right, Chris. And he'll probably take my dingoes too. Because he'll be like, oh, look, the cute doggies. I'll take those. And they can protect the wall. Ah. Anyway, we'll just get this disassembled and we can get to the more interesting part of this sort of job, which is, of course, looking under the microscope. Uh, better get the data drive out. Don't want to have any another Samsung drive, unfortunately. Man, in the near future, Transcend is going to be selling quite a lot of those replacement drives. Wow, something just stabbed me. Ah, piece of wire. Uh, let's have a look around the. Let's see, uh, better turn on the microscope. This will turn on just shortly. Ooh, I'm better. Okay, we've got fights now. 
Yeah, Dr. Now I saw that. I was about 10,000 off last night when I checked. So I was pretty um, surprised about that. Okay, let's hope that the cable isn't burned out. No, we've got a good cable. Thank Flip for that. Alright. That's pretty much all I cared about on that side. Um, we've probably got I think around about the other side of the border around about here the backlight circuitry is so it's probably got some junk floating on it I apologise if my voice is a bit crapped up today it's just uh, i got no time to be all saucy and sultry and whatever else I don't care I can't even think of the right words Hey Kratos. Uh Richard T, um sadly no, he was put down. And um that's part of the reason why I didn't sleep. And we were supposed to well we did trap two others last night, but they managed to dig their way out of the yard. So um I can't I can't blame them for that. I would too. But yeah, uh, so it was an unfortunate end of days for the old tabby. So I really wasn't happy about that, but there just really wasn't. There simply were no other options on hand. Um, he was certainly starting to go downhill a bit with um, whatever ailments and diseases he'd managed to pick up over the years with his fighting. I'll be honest and say that he probably wasn't even actually that old. I probably wouldn't put him more than two or three years old. But he'd been through a whole lot of war. Anyway, so yeah, that, that sort of was... It was not exactly a happy day. Why are you stuck? It's legitimately stuck there. I can't get that off. Wow. <laughs> That's seriously stuck on. Hey, Lewis Mendoza. Uh, Chris, we've got a bunch of strays that roam around here. And we've been trying to get them sorted out. You know, rehomed, things like that. But unfortunately, the strays that we've got right now, they appear to be from a generation of cats that have not had direct human exposure. Wow, that fan probably should be replaced. And that whole thing just sucked up whatever it was. It looks like it's coffee, maybe, if we're lucky. Anyway, so for about a year now, we've been trying to get this old tabby sorted out, try to you know, see if we can get him to be friendly and stuff like that. We fattened him up for a bit and then he started losing a lot of weight uh, even though we wormed him and everything like that so we are worried that he's carrying something like feline immunovirus or some kind of ailment. Then he had a permanently weeping eye from fights. Yeah, it's just... It, it's a sad story, but um, yeah, in spite of all that, if I was that Tavi, I'd probably still want to, you know, once you're alive, you kind of want to keep being alive. Okay, well, this is the use backlight output. That's a bit of concern. Oh look, a free fingernail. Awesome. Tasty. Well, good thing Zoidberg's not around, as it probably eat that as a potato chip. Is that pin? No, it's just shadowed. Yeah, so we've got at least two more strays that we have to, unfortunately, that'll probably meet the same fate. 
And it's quite sad because they're actually not that old. Okay, we've got a bit of a spot of corrosion there. But it certainly doesn't look like anything to be concerned about. And so as you can imagine, that's weighing quite heavily on our minds and hearts. It's rather brutal that you set out to save these animals and in many ways you end up being the one that delivers death to them. Now, as far as I know, there's no there's no backlight fuse on these ones, is there? It's current sense. I really hope the display isn't damaged. They'll just completely ruin the economics of this whole job. But quite frankly, I can't... There really isn't enough going on here to actually blame the board. Hmm. Unfortunately, I don't have a donor screen for these ones. I mean, the 49, 24s and things like that. So not many people have donors for those. And at six, seven hundred dollar a screen. Hell, even broken ones that are half functional sell for two or three hundred dollars easy. Well, yes, I mean, we certainly always help. And like, yeah, for the last year is had a reliable source of food and shelter and all that sort of thing. But yeah. Uh, and we probably would have kept on going, except that he started wanting to get into our enclosures, and he was starting to try to fight with ours. Um, and yeah, when that sort of thing starts happening, it's real trouble because you know the disease risk. And we've already got micro with his diabetes issues, so we really do not need to risk further compounding that. Hey David Blackburn. Uh, quantum physics, well you'll either get it right or you won't. Nah, like I said, this is really annoying because in spite of all the corrosion that you could see or not corrosion, but all the liquid you could see on the board um, in the chassis rather, my god my brain is completely fried right now. Uh, we do not really have anything obvious on the board and when you do not have anything obvious on the board that is a big problem. Well, I'm pretty sure this is backlight so I'll check to see what the output's like on that. Yeah, that's right, Chris. They do spread bad stuff very badly, very easily. Look, we had one that we had in foster care for quite a while. He ended up here at feline AIDS. And that kind of shocked the living daylights out of us. Because he did not, not, he did not look, he did not look like a cat with feline AIDS. But he certainly did. Even the vet was actually shocked because when we first took him in to be checked over, um, when we gave her the initial verbal preliminary, she said, oh yeah, he's probably got feline AIDS. And then we took him in and she said, there's no way he's got feline AIDS, he's in too good a condition because we'd you know, been feeding him up and whatnot. But it seems like he did in the end. The first condition we had with him, this is Halo by the way, this is a different cat. Uh, he would suffer a very extensive drooling in his mouth and he was missing one canine tooth and uh, it looked like he'd been struck by a car actually anyway so one vet said rip all his teeth out and they'll stop the autoimmune issue that he's suffering and we were like ah that's a little bit drastic so we just tried to feed him up and whatnot for a bit and then he that issue stopped. But, uh, so it was a good thing we didn't actually have him interact too much with our other ones. So yeah, as Chris says, you know, you, you've got to be really careful because these MacBook boards are really uh, dodgy. Ah. 
check the keyboard connector. Yeah, I'm not sure what they'll have to do with the backlight, but I mean, I will in a tad. I'm just going to have a look at the chassis again. Uh, I do not like these sort of jobs. Could be hiding under the SMC. Yeah, it didn't look like there was any lead into it, but I said we'll check those things in due time. Yeah, this is when I wish I had the 0.5 Barlow. At this point, I'm wondering whether the diagnosis is correct and in fact it actually has no image as opposed to no backlight. It might be a case of it was working and then it stopped as opposed to the backlight stopped. Oh, by the way, Chris, I fixed a iPhone 6, the toilet damage one. Oh, anyone else that was watching, I fixed the toilet damage iPhone 6. Ended up being chestnut. I had a nice pile of um, salty corrosion under it, and then so did Mason. Uh, Mason's 1v8 line was chewed out. And even after I fixed both of those up, it was a bit intermittent, but I did manage to get the data off, and in the end, that's all that mattered. The phone can now go into the trash for all I care. Yeah, this is going to be a sneaky, sneaky one. I'm going to stick it back in. This is what I get for not checking by booting up myself first. Slow brain day today, we shall say. Slow brain day. And therefore, all mistakes I make shall be forgiven by me. And I was raging a bit earlier today because we had a midday schedule pest inspection and it turns up at 10 o'clock in the morning and so what is the point of having a schedule if you're going to turn up when you're not scheduled and so I could have been doing other jobs well I was doing other jobs and I just hear this ding dong hi I'm the pest guy I'm here to do the inspection I'm like like hell you are it's like it's you're two hours early what am I going to do with you yeah I've got other things going on. I can't let you in all the rooms that you need to go to straight away. Anyway, so I had to drop everything that I was doing and then help this guy through the house. It's very frustrating. Being too early is almost as bad as being late for an appointment. If you have a schedule, stick to it. Turning up early is not actually a good trait any more than turning up late is. Punctuality is king. Unless you really want to tick someone off in that case then punctuality is an excellent way of well, abusing it is an excellent way of ticking people off especially if it's me that you're trying to tick off. Yeah sorry Richard like I said I mean I it yeah kept me up last night for sure and then we had the other two, like I said, that were in the enclosure ready to be picked up today. But, uh, yeah, they dug their way out under the fence at the gate. And so they got themselves another couple of days. This is why I'd like to have a couple of million dollars, a couple of hectares of property. And then I can just sort of take on these animals and... Yeah, the ones that fall between the cracks, the ones that aren't socialised enough, but they're okay, but you've got to keep them off the streets, or because always trouble. Put them into the enclosure, uh, the sanctuary, and then um, they'll be good after that. They don't cause anyone any trouble. They have a decent life. 
<sighs> yeah. Anyway, that's something for me to aim for. Once I got myself a reasonable house, you know, just sort of cover my basic requirements in life, and uh, and put the rest towards animal welfare, things like that. All right, well I'm just going to plug this in and see what happens. Green light. Yes, my. Oh, you can just. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, this is a fan. Awesome. Oh, thanks, Teresa. Yes, I appreciate it. Okay, we've got no fan spin. Alrighty. The game is afoot. So this is definitely not a no backlight situation, this is a no life situation. Oh, what just happened? Here we go. I'm not sure I would make a CPU is actually alive. It's quite hot to be honest. I think we may have a dead CPU. That's yeah, that's quite hot. Okay. Question of the day. Is our fan toast? Or is it something else? Hey Death Palm, welcome. Ah oh, man. I think it goes without saying that the fan is probably quite toasty. Still, this being a 4924, it's not overly likely to start spinning it. Got some Morgan. Dirk. Come out. So it's uh, one bag in a bag. And in that bag is another. That's ah, like children's birthday parties again. Pass the parcel. Yeah. This just arrived. It's for another machine, but I'm going to pop it into this one just to test. Is Anel around? Yeah. <laughs> Poor Anel. Everybody pays out on him now. All because he destroyed one PCH on Tim's stream. Or at least got the blame for it anyway. But it's set it's set the trend, so now everybody if your PCH dies, it's an L's fault. Why isn't this lifting up? Come on. Come on. Get in there. Uh-huh. There you go. <laughs> it's not pr not the dumbest of ideas, hitting the fan with yeah, uh, let's see. We'll plug a Mojave install in there. There's no drive in here, so that's okay. Power back on. 500, 600. But yeah, I have a nasty feeling this might be a dead CPU. I'll be happy to be wrong, but I would not be surprised if I'm not. Uh, Lewis and I didn't get those other fans running. I may pull them out of the trash and try again with one of them, but um, for now, no. So it concerns me that the CPU is running hot. Let's see what I got for V Core. Uh. 
Let's see if Paul can actually remember where vCore is. I've probably got the wrong ones here, but who knows. 1.8. Sounds vCore-ish to me. If a little high, though. But yeah, it's not looking good, especially the fact that we've basically got no real corrosion on the main board. We've got that tiny little speck, which I would be shocked if it was that. We've got a warm to hot CPU, and yeah, it's really not what I would consider to be a promising case. I'm just disconnecting everything. And see if things change at all. And it's trying to do something. It's, it's jumping around 500, 600. Yeah, it is doing something. I just noticed it's flashing blue. Yeah, okay, it's up to something. One of the trackpads holding it down, or the keyboard. Put the screen back in. Well, I would have said CPU, except for the fact that, like I said, it just started blinking on me then. And most, the other possibility is that I actually did not measure the right thing. 49.24, I may have got one of the other cores. I've got a fan spin now. Hmm. Well, I was measuring CPU VR. What's going on here? I've got a blimmin' rabbit hole, that's what. Uh, I haven't looked under the heatsink yet. I will shortly. I just want to see if I can see any backlight. It's a little hard on these retina ones. Worried about blowing some toenail into my mouth there. And it's flashing away. Well, I gotta admit, the flashing does not look like normal, normal dattery type flashing. It could be wrong. We'll give it another minute or two. So I'm really not seeing any sort of shadowing or anything on the screen. Yeah, and the flashing of the drive is just a really high frequency hit 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 hit. Yeah, I'm not real sure what I'm dealing with here. And it's non-stop, it's... Um, something's very wrong. Alright, let's have a look under the CPU heatsink and see what's... See if it's got a story to tell us. 
Um, I could plug in an external screen, yes. I do need to get one of those little 10 or 11 inch full HD screens, you know, 19, 20, 1080, things like that. I don't know if they get them in 10 inch, but certainly I'm pretty sure an 11 inch you can get them. I need to get one of those. Or two of them, in fact. One for my front desk, so I can plug my Windows machines into it when I'm unfortunately forced to have to fix one of those things. And one for here, so I can just plug the HDMI cable in and get an idea of what's coming out. Yes, that's right, Spiky James, it is dead in some way, obviously. Now the question is, is it a repairable way, or is it a Star Trek, she's dead, Jim way? Has this worn the red shirt? Is this a red shirt MacBook? Defcom, is that a full HD one though? Or just, because I know a lot of them say full HD, but really they're just downscaling to 800 by 600 or some other lower resolution. Well, the PCH seems okay. Because usually you can tell fairly well when they've blown. There's like pieces of PCH everywhere. And I can't see any um, side venting or anything like that. Defcon, can you send me a link to that, where you bought that from? There's sometimes, even if the PCH, this portion here, hasn't actually shattered, you may get a little brown dot on the side around here, where it's uh, just blown through. Yeah, I guess what I'll do is I will hook up the HDMI. I just hate having doing that. It's such a pain because I've got to get under the under the desk and stuff like that. No, I don't like being under the desk. People start calling me a desk rabbit, and I'm not a desk rabbit. If not Def Poms, you know, I'll just look on eBay because that's where I have been looking. I said most of the 10 inch ones I'm seeing are, like I said, the fake HD, they're only the, uh, what is it, um, 1366, 720 type size, downscale. Let's see if the trackpad causes it to shut down too. Because we weren't getting a fan spin before. And now we're not getting a fan spin again. Yeah, the, the term desk rabbit comes from IT crowd. <coughs> Roy's stuck under desk. All because he was up there trying to fix the computer and in spite of asking if someone had unplugged it and them saying no, someone had unplugged it so he plugs it back in but then just as he's about to crawl out from under the desk the person returns and she's a lady and then he's trapped under the desk. And if he reveals himself, he'll be considered a pervert because he's under a desk. And then they'll call him a desk rabbit.
A computer repair from Canada. Okay, I'll disconnect the trackpad, but plugged in the keyboard. Let's see if we get any. I'm just going through a process of elimination here at this point. AliExpress, full life definition IPS, 13.3, 150. 13.3 is getting a little bit big. I really am looking for 10, 11. Yeah, this thing's driving me insane. I wonder if it's the, um... Uh, I sure hope it's not the voltage drivers, the CPU VFDs. Yeah, now it's doing nothing. It's still getting hot. Oh, there we go, we're flashing now. Alright, I'm just going to move the chat window so that I can then switch the screen. Hey Rob Brown. Oh man. I suppose one way out of this is if I bought a HDMI switcher. That would probably eliminate the issue to some degree. HDMI is on the other side as a pull. Yep. Ah, that means I've got to plug in the daughter board. And we do a fan spin. So much of repairing stuff is often this sort of thing where you're just chewing up hour after hour, plugging in stuff. Mm. Does this work with this? Does this work with that? Well, let's see. Option key. We'll just hold that. Okay, so I'm connected up to HDMI now. Let's see what happens. Uh, if I'm, don't worry about it. It'll be fine. I'll just dig through uh, eBay and see what I can find. Okay, I did just get energizing on the screen, so it's certainly putting a signal out. Still black though. Or did that was that just a case of the screen turning off? I hate it with screens, uh, with electronic devices, you either have pilot lights that blind you, or you have lights that are completely, utterly insipid that you can't even tell whether they're on or off. Yeah, that's on. Okay, we've got an Apple boot here. We might just have a dead screen. There's always that. Uh, we've got the HDMI showing up now. It must have just shut itself down. The screen probably shut itself down before all the signals started getting to it. Uh, let's see. Well, what we'll do is we'll try it again. We'll measure the backlight output voltage and see what we've got there. But given the liquid damage and all that, I wouldn't be surprised if we've got a dead screen. Hey, nuts and proud, I've immigrated to France. Ah, oh, bonjour, monsieur. Liquid marks behind the glass of the screen. I'll have a look and see if you're right about that. It's... There's certainly grime down here. Disconnect that. Alright, so we know it is alive. 
and doing something. The lack of the chime could be simply because... Oh, here I go, desk rabbit time. But, but I'm not a desk rabbit. Ah, okay, and we're back. Certainly the fan, I'd say, is cactus. We'll just plug in that, uh, we'll plug in the screw for the fan so that we don't have the unfortunate situation of it drifting off and tearing that flex before it's due time. There we go. <coughs> okay, so we'll pop that. Yeah, which you cannot see. I will shift the chat back window. Now I want the backlight pins. Oh, okay, so it's basically the first one. <laughs> Alright, easy peasy. <laughs> Looks like I knocked the camera at some point. Yep, everybody wants crotch cam. <coughs> Man, I cannot get my I cannot get my voice to clear today. I'm not expecting a great miracle out of this, but if we see th 30 volts or whatever coming off this, then we know we've got strife. Man, I am too old for this sh stuff. I really need the microscope for this. Sorry, you guys are going to lose view of this for a little bit while I do my backlight screen voltage test. We should be back in scope now. Okay, good. Focus sucks a bit, but that's life. We've got absolutely no backlight voltage. F fans up. Alright. Oh, is the screen even being detected? That's the next thing. But I'm now starting to think maybe bad screen after all this. Let's see. 3v3 for the EDP panel. What are you? So we've got power to the panel for a start. We don't even have EDP power to the panel. Okay, that's not good. Alright, what about the 5 volts? Nothing. Seriously, nothing coming out of here? Alright. Some more digging around is required, it seems. I haven't even got a chance to test the backlight chip yet. So we're not even getting anything here.
Let's see if we can test any of this these lines anywhere. Okay, pin one. Oh. Man, how am I supposed to test that? I suppose I could scratch away something. Oh, okay. Looks like I can test on this big cap here. Which is a nice juicy tantalum, is it? Come on, come on, come on. I need something to help me get started. Okay, so we do have five volts on there. Well, finally. So we've got five volts, so that would be at least powering that. Where's our naval line? Great. Naturally, it's under there. I wonder if I can scratch away. Let's try that. Dis disconnect power. So I want to see if there's an enable here. And I think it's going to be that trace there. So I'm just going to scratch that away so I can cheat. Oh, actually, maybe I can just shove a probe in on the side. For some reason, I thought this was a BGA, but it's not. <coughs> Welcome to Paul making lots of very slow-brained mistakes today. If you ever wanted to have some ammunition to use against me for saying that I shouldn't be doing repairs as a professional business, then sit down, strap in, watch and enjoy, because I'm doing it today. God damn. Okay, I'm just waiting to see if a naval comes up. You could easily scratch the top layer off that trace. It's not going to do any harm at all. Yeah, it appears we do not have an enable. Oh, well, yeah, that's right. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see, in pin 3, it should be at 5 volts. Yep. And then, damn it, we just have to do this backwards. Yeah, nothing coming out of it. And that's not a surprise though, because we don't have an enable signal. But it probably needs to detect the screen before it can even bother with doing that enable. Uh, Alright, I think the quickest way for me to probably diagnose this is to drop this board into another chassis. But where my apprehension here is, is on the fact that if this board is generating 
something that could say damage a panel and I drop the board into a test, you know, connect up a test screen and I damage that screen, as you can imagine, that's not a very good situation. So what might be better is if I put a test board into this, one that I know is working, and then if it still doesn't come out, then we know we have a panel issue. Because I definitely, it's definitely going to be cheaper for me to get a replacement board in this case than it is a panel. Yeah, exactly. You can kill a second screen. You don't want that. Lid sensor. That's also possible. We'll have a look there. Yeah. Um, let's see. Where is the lid sensor on this one? SMC lid. Uh huh. There might be a test pad there. Oh, there is, I think. I think we're actually quite fortunate. That test pad there is SMC lid. A uh, magnet might find it, except for the fact that it won't trigger it. Yeah, anyway. I don't know why I'm bothering to reconnect that actually. There's no real point or purpose. Right, just open up the lid. Connect some power. Get our probes. Let's see what we get. 3.3, we're fine. That's what it should be. Uh, James, just go on to badcaps.net or even just Google. Google for the board number, board view, and you'll get the results. It's really that simple. And if you go to a site called Bad Caps, you'll you yeah, know, almost always get a hit. <laughs> okay, so I need a, another 4924 that should be functional. I think I've, well, there's that one we fixed the other night. I think that was a 4924, or was that a dreaded earlier model? No, it's not a 4924, it's an earlier model. Damn it. So it appears I do not even have a donor s display for this anyway. Ah, damn it. What about you? No, you're also 36. Oh, come on, man. Oh. No, also. 
bet you I shipped out the last of my 49-24 jobs. Oh, wait. No, oh, I do have one. Oh, the uh, battery one. I mean, maybe they're compatible, I don't know, with the displays, or maybe the 2015 will still partially work, but you just won't get uh, brightness control or something like that. I don't know. These are the sort of details that the walking geniuses, brain fest people like Tim Herman and Lewis Rossman remember those sort of specifics or Pernov. But short term memory simpletons like myself do not. It's sort of like, it's amazing that I even remember to use Google. The way I go, sometimes I have to Google how to Google. Hey Ainsley, no, you're good. Mm. Uh, James, go to badcaps.net. That will be your saving grace. Ah, this is the fan that I have to actually put back to the real owner. Right. This is the board that actually has to have that fan as a replacement. Playing parts merry-go-round. There's some always marvel in, at the people who can remember the specifics of each version and what works with this and works with that. And I do have a matrix table set up, but I never seem to remember to have it with me. So I'm my own worst enemy in that respect. Alright. So here we go. Did I just hear a bong? I did. Fairly sure I did. We've got flashings. And we still do not have something on the screen. I don't think so. We'll give it another minute. I suppose realistically I shouldn't even bother with having a stick in there. I should just let it come up the folder if nothing else. Oh no, I didn't check for a short, but that would actually make sense because maybe it's the current sensing and kicking in and shutting it down. It's flashing away like a lunatic here, so it should be displaying something, but it's certainly not. Turn that off. Let's do that cable test. Backlight seems to be okay. That seems to be okay. We do not appear to have a short on any of the power lines. What's the other one? Pin 5.
Yeah, no sure. Nothing. Yeah, it could be the data lines. Could be so many damn things, that's the trouble. Alright, we'll have a look at the obviously this is a donor board. Yeah, but whatever it is, it's yeah, the display. So I'm I'm just not willing to risk it with a display. Because if I blow that display, then that's it. My budget's gone. Thing is, I'm not. It. Nah. It could be one of the data lines for the fact that it doesn't seem to even recognise that there is a display there. So when I say data lines, I'm talking about in the LCD itself. Damn it! Wish I had a spare one of these. But at this point, I'm yeah, probably going to say it needs a display. And I would say potentially that it was... Uh, oh, hang on there. Just trying to stop myself making a mix-up here, so just bear with me two seconds so I don't create a nightmare later for myself when I go, why is this part mixed up with this? Okay, you guys are together. You go into here. You need to be tested. Nothing quite like the joy of mixing up your various parts. That's the other reason why I don't like to mix and match too much is because it could say a I get a phone call or someone's got to see me immediately or something comes up and I lose that uh, mindset of what I was doing and I come back and I have left things mixed up and I don't remember. Let's see. Test I had made on board. Seems fine. Hey John. Yeah, Rodrigo. I guess I'm just being paranoid here. If I had a broken display for the 2015 A1502 then, um, you know, I'd give it a shot, but I don't. The only 2015 displays I've got are other people's, and I'm just not willing to do that. I mean, there's... Technically, you're correct, rationally, that uh, if the voltages are fine, then we shouldn't burn out the LCD panel. But do you really want to take that risk when it's a seven dollars $800 panel you're getting involved with? It's just not worth it. So I would rather incorrectly declare this as a LCD panel requirement and find out that I was wrong than plug in a working LCD panel and turn it into a non-working LCD panel. If it was a 1466, I might consider taking the risk. But 1502 Retina, 2015, it's, yeah, I don't want that on my head. So what I'll do is I'll just, I'll message the person and say, look, yeah, at this stage we've got a ambiguous scenario. We do need to do a differentiation test. And from that we'll be able to determine whether the board is just fine other than that tiny little speck of corrosion that we had. But, um, uh, given how saturated that is there, 
I'll probably be erring towards it being the panel for sure. Yeah, exactly, Rodrigo. It's just too expensive. Like I said, fine, you know, I lose the 300 bucks on this job and the time. But it's sort of losing money you didn't have yet, as opposed to most definitely losing money when you blow the screen. And, yeah, the risk is low. But it is there. And I do have a bit of a trademark for... Not trademark. I do have a trait of not taking those higher risks. At least, you know, not until I've had the chance to eliminate others. So what I'll probably look go and look for is see if I can find any broken 1502-2015 bo uh, screens. Fat chance of that happening. So if anyone in Australia happens to know of, of such a panel going around for sale somewhere, uh, be, let me know. Let's see if we can wash this fan out so it's not a complete loss this stream. Even if it's... It doesn't matter if it's so cracked. So long as you can just see one tiny portion of the screen to confirm that it's firing up the backlight, things like that, then you're good. What's that? Yeah, Steve, I did that, and it also didn't come up with anything, so... which is why I'm now in this state. I must have used up all my good luck getting those iPhone data recoveries done. Actually, this should be okay. It just needs to have all that scum removed. Contacts look fine. I'd say the motor's okay too. Yeah, so if anyone has broken 2015-1502 screen with even just a teeny tiny portion working, that'd be awesome. And yeah, you know, I'm not asking for free or anything like that. I mean, I will pay a reasonable price for it. But some of the prices you see on eBay are just ludicrous. Like, I'm not paying $300 for something like that. I'd be better off just going to um, not AliExpress, but better off going to Union Repair, picking up one of those bare panels with no chassis on it, no frame, and using one of those, because it'd be cheaper. Scratchy nose time. Yay. I'm going to put this back in, see if it does fire up that fan still. We could also have the secondary issue with our touchpad, uh, trackpad. In which case, this truly will become pretty much a not economical job. Uh, let's see. Are you thinking a screen replacement from Apple? To be honest, no, it does not really. No, this one is surprisingly good, which is surprisingly rare. I'm just going to let this fan sit in this board and see if it does fire up, because I know it did fire up with the other one. And so if it doesn't fire up this one, then I can pretty much be sure it's a dead fan. I'd be surprised, though, if it is dead. <coughs> Pardon me. Just give it a little while to warm up. 
Yeah, unfortunately there's no wear on this one, Chris. As opposed to the other one that I was playing with and it looked like someone had gone over it with a whole back of a whole pack of stainless steel wool. Uh, let's see if we can Arnold G, you're quite probably right about that. I'm not going to dare try and split these displays apart. I'll leave that to someone else who knows how to do that sort of thing or has a lot of experience. I've tried splitting apart a few displays like the 1466s and uh, well I can get them apart, I can get that front bezel off and everything. After that I was like, no, no thanks. Probably use a dead fan too, I guess. Oh well. Come on, spin. Hey Carl, Tahiti. Well, I'd say you're probably the first person I've seen from Tahiti. Welcome. Hey Catherine. Um, part shipping to Australia. It's not the cheapest. Fortunately, import duties are not a big issue in Australia. So we do have that advantage. Oh come on, surely you got to spin. And you're getting hot enough. Okay, let's call it dead then. Oh wait, just as I was about to say it's dead, it comes to life. Sometimes you got to threaten these little bastards. Well, fan spins. Alright. Just had to wait till it got to 110 centigrade. Okay. Uh, like that's a write off in that case. Well, not a write off, but in terms of your time invested into watching this, hoping for an entertaining stream with soldering and screaming. You've been sorely let down, I'm afraid. Oh well. Actually, I don't know why I'm disassembling that. It all has to go back together now. And I don't have any other jobs for today, for that sort of thing. I did my data recovery last night while I couldn't sleep. So you all missed out on that. But I suppose what I'll do is I'll go and edit the videos and come back, upload that. So while you will not get the pleasure of yelling at me directly while I'm working on something, you still will get at least to watch something happen. Chris, you're having a quality control from Mobile Centrix. Uh, that's not a good advertisement for them. But then again, I can't speak because uh, you probably missed the other streams, but I was trying to get a DC inboard for a 2012 1466 and two of them that I received from the same place were all both useless. One was looked like it had been pulled out from the swamp and wiped down. The other one had been physically damaged. Was, I don't even know how they did it, but yeah, they physically damaged it. So, congratulations, chaps. Congratulations. This is 80 20 alcohol water. It's good for dealing with human scum. Because if you try to use just straight alcohol on this sort of stuff, it's not going to work. Straight alcohol will not get this sort of drink type scum off. Oh yeah, Chris, I find that a fair bit too. You get some charge ports that 
don't do a full charge rate. I thought it was just bad luck on my behalf in terms of, you know, maybe I picked up the wrong charge cable or something like that. But yeah, I get that a fair bit. Oh yeah, Joshua, that was... Uh, I've got to send that back still. I've just been so busy, I haven't had a chance to send back their junk. And it was absurd because there's plenty of room under the plastic holder that they had to stick the DC inboard and not damage the batteries. They were lucky that thing didn't decide to go all pyrotechnic in mid-flight. Right, this is looking all pretty again. Didn't even have to ultrasonic it. Hey, Paul! How's it going down in Tassie today? Tasmania is Australia's New Zealand. Catherine, that's my um, 80-20 mix. So like I've got yeah, 80-20 and this is 100 and then I've got 100 in the pump bottle and then 80-20 in a small pump bottle. So I've got all my options available as I need them. Okay, like in this instance, because I've got to get the drink off the back of this, I'll use the pump maybe. Cold and wet. Sounds like Tasmania. Just how you like it. I personally very much love Tasmania. People kind of mock me sometimes when I say I want to move there. It could be the extreme heat of the North Queensland region that's driving me to feel like I need to go to Tasmania. All I know is I want to go there. Again. Alright, that'll do. Richard, yes, 100 proof in the twist bottle that it came from. There. Almost looks newish. Um, Ainsley, it's just 80 20, just as a random figure. Really, you could. I find 90 10 still doesn't have enough water in it. 70-30 I find perhaps has too much water in it and when the alcohol comes off just through evaporation it doesn't it leaves behind too much water. So I find it around about 80-20 mark there's um, enough the water sort of gets driven off a lot easier but also can still dissolve enough so yeah. Came here 11 years ago for a holiday and stayed. Which uh, are you in Hobart or Launceston or Devonport area? If that's okay to ask, I know you know naturally not everyone wants to reveal where they're from. I was there in 2011. Up. Uh, 2011? No, no, no. I was in there 2001, not 2011. Yes, 2001. December, I think it was. And in spite of it being December, it was actually quite pleasant and cool. To the point where the locals said, oh, it's surprisingly cool. We've been driving around all the various places. We are up in uh, Grindelwald. That's where we stayed. So it had the double whammy of being Tasmania and being like Switzerland to me, so... That was really a big s win for me. Yeah. Okay, you need Devonport. Cool.
Alrighty, well, I'm gonna call that a bust. The stuff I've got in here is basically just needs ultrasonicing and reassembling. That's pretty much all I've got left to do today is ultrasonics and reassembles. I've got nothing interesting. So it's quite depressing. I do apologise. I had high hopes for a f fun and entertaining stream. Oh well. Let me just put some bubble wrap down so that I don't damage things. I need to get more carry containers for my various bits and pieces. Because sometimes I get jobs that, uh, like, the person sends two or three machines at once. And so I really do prefer to have one machine per carry container, but I'm starting to run out again already. Give us that. That. Okay, we are done. Alright. Okay, well, this is a stream. If you ever want a thumbs down, this is definitely one to do the thumbs down on. So, uh, let's see, just pop up to the big star. There we go. Grunewald is for making holidays in Switzerland. Yep, certainly is. Wonder if you could make a homemade sonic cleaner of speakers or something. Probably, you could probably have half a chance if you had a Pezio driver. Uh, but the real problem is that in order to get the actual power, the wattages, wattage required at that frequency, then yeah, you really do need a proper ultrasonic driver for those there. Not one thumbs down, that's right. They'll, they'll come afterwards. When the people who are just waiting for me to finish the stream and they um, will... Uh, yeah, the notification would say, Paul Daniels had a stream, they're like, we're on our way to do the thumbs down. Honestly, that's pretty slack of them. They should have robots doing that for them instead of doing it manually. But, yeah, maybe they want to have that personal touch. And yeah, you got to admire dedication like that. So, the damn tube is still dripping. Uh, so, yeah, that's pretty much it, unfortunately. It's Absolutely nothing interesting, because I've done all my work, it's a Friday afternoon. The only things I've got left to do are PC jobs, and I really am hating those lately, like people coming in saying, oh, my printer driver's not working properly, and you're like, oh dear God, and you find out then the whole windows just needs to be wiped and start again. Haha, -ha, nice one Chris, yeah, thumbs down to the thumbs up in the southern hemisphere. Indeed. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Thank you all for sticking around for that. Uh, we didn't even heat up the soldering iron once, so how bad is that? Maybe this afternoon someone will drop in something. Maybe the delivery man will give me something interesting, and if so, I'll be back. But until then, it might be until next week. All right, we'll leave it at that. You'll take care. Don't let the dingoes bite. I'll see you next time. <laughs>